Hey there, my name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and welcome back to another Multiphonics tutorial. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the concept of CV, or control voltage, inside of Multiphonics, which is probably one of the most fundamental aspects of modular synthesis to understand. Control voltage is a very simple but very powerful thing, and once you understand the basic forms of CV and how to harness them, you can start building patches. But I think more importantly, once you understand that all of the different forms of CV can be used in a lot of different ways, some of which we'll be exploring here today, it really starts starts to unlock the potential of everything that multiphonics and modular synthesis has to offer. To start things off today, let's go over two of the most basic forms of CV, which would be triggers and gates. So a trigger is a simple on message. If we wire a trigger into the level here to visualize it, and then we wire the trigger into the VCA control here, we'll hear that we get a short blip whenever a note is pressed. And if we watch the level, the trigger jumps up and down almost instantly. What a trigger is doing is saying that an event happened. In this case, a note was pressed. Now the difference between a trigger and a gate is that a gate is going to be open for as long as we hold the note. If I press a note and hold it down here, the trigger jumps up and down almost instantly and it doesn't stay open. If we unwire this and instead wire up a gate, and then we'll wire the gate into the level, we'll see that when I press and hold a note, the gate opens and stays open for as long as I hold the note. And when we release, it jumps right back down to zero. Now that we understand the basics of triggers and gates, let's take one more look at the gate here by wiring it into a level. If we take another look when I press and hold a note, this jumps up to a value of 10 volts and stays there until I release it. But in the world of multiphonics, a gate is actually anything with a value of over 2 volts. Now this is important to understand because typically we might wire our gate to the gate input of an ADSR, we'll use that to control a VCA and out it goes. Let's try something a little bit different though. Let's use the square output of this LFO, which we'll see jumps up here to only a value of five. Now we'll take that square output and put it into the gate here, and then we'll use this envelope to control the VCA. And as you would expect, because this jumps over two, it's going to trigger that ADSR. And as we speed it up and slow it down, We can use that to create a gate because it's anything over two volts. This same two volt value applies to gate, trigger, and reset events. So whenever you're creating a patch and wanna create one of those events, keep in mind that it can be any signal that goes above two volts. Now that we understand the gate and trigger a little bit better, let's talk about shaping these events. Now we've done this several times before up until this point with something like the ADSR, where we can take this and then we can feed this out to visualize it with the level. And as we add attack, decay, sustain, and release values, we're actually shaping the level over time, even though the gate is on and then off. We're using this to reshape the on and off motion. But you can do this with a lot of different things. So for instance, we could run it here into a slew limiter instead. Now we'll unwire this wire the linear output here to the level, and then wire the linear output to the VCA. And we can use this slew limiter to once again reshape the gate signal. Another very common form of CV that's fun to play with in different ways would be pitch. Now here, as you would expect, I've wired the pitch to the pitch input of a VCO. And if we play this, we get a playable synth sound. In the world of modular synths, pitch is measured in volts per octave. So pitch can come from any source of CV. We'll show this very quickly by wiring the pitch to the level in here. If I play a low C, we'll see that this comes out at zero. If I play a C an octave above that, we should see a value of one volt. And one octave above that should give us two volts. So with that, we can actually get pitch from any source. Let's try wiring the output of an LFO directly into the pitch input of the VCO here. Now, if we give this a play, as you would probably expect, we're going to hear this sweep up and down because if we take a look at the level, it's just sweeping up and down and up and down forever and ever. Now, that's maybe not the most useful sound ever, so we can use another tool to reshape the CV to be something a bit more musical. For that, we're going to use the quantizer here, and let's just turn off the notes we don't want to create a quick chord. Something about like... 
this should do. Now, if we wire the output of the LFO into the input of the quantizer and the output of the quantizer into the level, we'll see that this snaps every so often at different intervals because we're shaping this to stop at these different voltage values. Now, we can wire the output into the pitch input of the VCO, and if we give this a play and take a listen, we should hear this sweeping through a chord. <laughs> Now, while that sounds very fun and sparkly, it's maybe a bit ridiculous. So we could use something like a VCA to once again reshape this by dialing back the level. So let's wire the LFO into the VCA and then use the bias to control the level of the LFO signal we're passing into the quantizer. This ends up restricting the range, so we're not crossing all of the available octaves of the VCO, but rather only a controlled range. <laughs> One of the most conventional ways to use CV in the world of modular is as a source of modulation. Here we've got a subtractive synth patch and we could control the filter by clicking and dragging and moving the cutoff around. Now we might want to have something do that for us and that's where our friend CV comes in. If we wire out this triangle to the level input here, we can see this is going to sweep up and down just like I was doing with the mouse cursor. And if we wire this into the modulation input, we can have CV move the filter cutoff for us. When it comes to utilizing CV as a source of modulation, we can also control the level of modulation using the level control input here next to each of the input jacks. So if we dial this down to 0%, we'll hear the filter does not move at all. And as we start increasing it, we'll see that it corresponds with the level. We're just increasing the amount of CV going into the filter cutoff. Now, in some cases, these knobs are also what's called an attenuverter, or it can attenuate or invert a signal. So if we drop this down to minus 100%, when the level reaches the top value, we'll actually be closing the filter. And when it reaches the lowest value, it'll actually be fully open. <laughs> And if we go back to positive 100%, this goes back to as you would expect, it closes at the low value and opens at the high value. Another important thing to understand here is the concept of polarity when it comes to modulation. Right now, this is what's called bipolar modulation because it's going both above and below zero. So the filter increases and decreases in cutoff. But maybe we only want the filter to increase in cutoff. We never want it to go below the set point. And for that, we would need to create unipolar modulation or a modulation that only goes above zero. Creating unipolar modulation is actually pretty simple to do. We just need to pull in a bias module here. If we wire out the triangle to the input of the bias and then use the plus five volt output here, we'll see that this jumps up to a value of 10 and down to zero because we're adding five volts to the current output. This means we're buying it to be all the way above zero all the time. If we output this to the filter cutoff here, let's drop the range down a little bit, we'll hear that it only increases in value and never goes below the currently set value. To cap things off here, let's quickly talk about velocity in multiphonics, because one important thing to understand about the velocity CV signal is that it is actually bipolar. If we wire the velocity output to the level input here and play a very soft note, we'll see that this actually goes below zero, and if we play hard, this actually goes up to five volts. So this is a full range of minus five to plus five CV. So if we wire this to the cutoff input of our filter here, we'll hear that it's actually a bipolar modulation. And if we wanted this to be unipolar, of course, we would then take this and instead run it through a bias, add five volts to create a unipolar form of velocity to the filter cutoff, and anything else would remain bipolar. So this is a really handy modulation to use for things that are velocity sensitive. If we get this cable out of the way here, we can see that there's a velocity input here on the ADSR. We can feed that into the velocity input and control the amount of velocity sensitivity and that is going to control the level feeding into the VCA. And that is a brief look at control voltage inside the world of multiphonics. Control voltage is a very simple but very powerful tool inside the world of modular synthesis because it allows you to take full control over whatever you want by using the different inputs and different forms of CV to change, modulate, and create new forms of signal to do 
whatever you want with. That wraps everything up for this video, so thank you for watching. For more Multiphonics tutorials coming your way very soon, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below, and for more information on Multiphonics or to try it out for yourself today, you can visit AppliedAcoustics.com. Thank you.